Welcome back to part two of this refining series. Here you can see the gold down in this beaker, a goodly amount of it. We're gonna begin by removing this waste liquid. We're gonna pour it off into a, uh, a waste container here that I have set up. I normally put this stuff in my stock pot to reclaim any precious metals that might still be in this liquid. We're just going to pour it in this temporary container right now. Alright, here's the gold down in the beaker. Got another waste container here that I need to uh, empty out. I'm going to pour that into my uh, larger container over here. Now what we'll do is just rinse this gold over and over with some uh, cold distilled water. Still seeing some yellow in this uh, these cold distilled water rinses. So I'm going to continue to rinse with distilled water until I get all that yellow color rinsed out of there. Okay, now the, uh, the water rinses look colorless. And we're going to add some hydrochloric acid now and do some rinses with some hydrochloric acid. And you're going to see that the, uh, the yellow color is going to come back now that we have these acid rinses. And that's the advantage of using hydrochloric acid to do these rinses. It does a better job than just plain water at uh, removing dissolved metals from the gold. I know this is boring. This is the most boring part of the whole process, but I gotta keep rinsing this with hydrochloric acid to get all that yellow off of there. Now we're going to give this a boil in some hydrochloric acid, but before I do that, I'm going to add a little bit more sand to my uh, dish back here. So I got a decent layer of sand going on in there. See, there's a thicker layer of sand that should help me prevent any uh, steam bubbles that I might experience. When I have the heat turned up to boil these solutions, I'm adding some hydrochloric acid and we're going to give this a boil in hydrochloric acid. All right, I should have thought of this earlier. Before I start heating this up, I'm going to transfer the gold to a smaller beaker so that uh, it's easier to handle. Someone had also commented about uh, making sure that these earrings were separated from their retainers. 
And that's a good idea. That's a correct way to do this. Junk can get in the between the stem and the retainer. So I've taken the retainers off. We're going to put them into our uh, ultrasonic cleaner now. Get this thing to line up. There we go. Stick this up in the ultrasonic. Got them all cleaned up now. They should be nice and sterilized. No bacteria. Let's go ahead and get this hydrochloric acid boil poured off now. Okay, this is uh, second hydrochloric acid oil. Someone had asked why I put gloves on like this, leather gloves. I just do it as a matter of convenience. It's harder to sit there. Let's see how that's yellow still. So we've got some more rinsing to do. It's just a matter of convenience for me to put these rubber or uh, leather gloves on as opposed to the nitrile gloves that I normally wear. This is the most boring part of this whole process. This is one of the drawbacks of using ferrous sulfate. It takes uh, a ton of rinsing to get all that, that uh, iron sulfate off of the gold. That's okay. It does make some very clean gold. And we should get nice pure gold bar with this single refining because we used ferrous sulfate. This is a simple test to check for uh, the presence of iron in our uh, liquids. This is ammonium thiocyanate. Put a little bit of it in a spot plate cavity here. Some of the liquid out of this container. I know it has uh, iron in it, and just watch what it does when it hits that ammonium thiocyanate. It'll turn blood red, and that's how I can tell that there's iron in this solution. This is a fairly sensitive test. I'll reach down in here. Some of this uh, hydrochloric it's boiling, and we're going to take that on this other little chrome of ammonium thiocyanate and see if we get a reaction. You can see there that I've got just a little bit of a pink color going on. So that means that I've still got iron in that liquid in with that gold. So I got to continue to rinse until I don't have any more reaction down here with the ammonium thiocyanate. Like I said earlier, this is the most boring part of the whole process, but it is critical to get all that iron rinsed off. And so we'll just keep going with these uh, alternating hydrochloric acid boils and water boils until the ammonium thiocyanate test is negative then we can be certain we've got all of the iron rinsed off as gold.
before we go to melt it. A little bit more hydrochloric acid, set it back up on the heat, and let it continue to boil. Had this up here boiling in hydrochloric acid for quite a while. I'm going to repeat our test now. Get a little bit of uh, ammonium thiocyanate into uh, a couple of cavities in our spot plate. Now, this is our known sample. It's got iron in it. You see, it turns blood red. Boom, boom. Now, what we'll do is reach up here. I bet. Grab some of this liquid in here. And we'll take some of this now. Put it on this spot plate. And I really don't see any kind of reaction. It's safe to conclude that we've got all the uh, iron out of here now. Just continue to rinse this off. Get this hydrochloric acid rinse off of here. Now rinse it with some distilled water now. Over and over. off now. This water boil.
here's our pure gold bar that we just melted. And single refining. It looks excellent. And uh, let's see, what were we expecting on this thing? We're looking for 87.6 grams of 24K pure gold. Let's see what the actual yield is here. 85.4. So we're off by a couple grams, but that's uh, not that unusual. I'm very pleased with the way this thing came out after a single refining. It wanted to fight me there when I was uh, trying to melt it. But we finally got it poured. All right, this will conclude part two of the series. Thank you for watching.